What's going on my friends? DJ Lowstacks here. Welcome back or to the channel. Today, it almost marks the two year mark of me purchasing my very first salsa booth. And I've actually bought a second one. This is gonna be the second generation salsa. And today what I wanna do is uh, unpackage it for the very first time and talk a little bit about salsa and why I love it so much. That's coming up next. So as many of you guys know, I'm a firm believer in the salsa booth. It's been a great, great, great addition to my DJ business. I never wanted to be a photo booth company. I'm still not technically a photo booth company, but I am an entertainment business that offers photo booths. And I just bought my second one. So I bought my first salsa just after the DJ Collective in 2019. Last year, I didn't get to use it a ton because COVID and everything, we actually only did, I personally did 10 uh, DJ events. So I only DJ 10 gigs and the salsa probably went out maybe five or six times, but 2021, the salsa went out 24 times. So huge difference there. And uh, well, I wanna jump into why that was so great and what about that drove, drove me to buy my second salsa booth. So this is actually the second generation salsa. So <clears throat> the first generation was the one that I already had. There's not a whole lot of changes uh, from gen one to gen two. Um, I think a lot of it is more of the internal things, but I did open, I did notice when I just opened up the case that uh, it comes with some different tools and things like that. So I'm gonna open this case up. I'm gonna walk through uh, what's inside of it. I'm gonna talk about salsa. I'm gonna talk about how I've used it to grow my business, how I've used it as an add-on. And then I'm gonna do a time-lapse of me putting the salsa together uh, to show you guys how quickly it can be done now that I've had at least a year of experience putting these things together. So let's just get this thing cracked open. So the first thing you'll notice is it does come in a really nice SKB case. If you guys have not seen my first video on the salsa, uh, I'll leave a link in the cards up here somewhere so you can check that one out because that's more of like a first impressions video. This one is gonna be more of a, I guess, second impressions and how I feel about it after owning one for two years. So when you first crack it open, this is a nice solid SKB case. Um, it's got custom molded foam to fit the salsa perfectly. Within the package here, you're gonna have IEC cables. This is gonna be the cable that connects to the head. In here is gonna be your charging block. So you got your charging block right here. And then in the case, you're gonna have your salsa head. And one thing that I thought was kind of cool is they give you your serial number, which I believe is the number of salsas that they've made. So this is serial number 3,460. And check this out. I actually still have the insert from my original salsa, which was 1136. So I don't know if that's the number that it was built. I'm thinking it is. So I've got a, uh, uh, one from the 1000 runs and one from the 3000 runs. Kind of cool. So here's some tips on salsa maintenance, things like that. Let's get the party started. A little welcome to the salsa team card there. Inside, separating each section of the salsa are these nice felt pads, which are super nice for uh, keeping your salsa nice. So the next section down is gonna be your base plate. This is just a foam insert that goes in the base of the head, just to keep dirt or anything out of those plugs. Then you've got your another, another piece of your felt. There's a separator that separates these two vertical pieces. So the two verticals are in the very bottom. And then some of the differences between the Gen 1 that I noticed is just some of the stuff that it comes with. So this is a little tool to um, use the home button on your iPad. If you have an older iPad like I do, it comes with a uh, microfiber cloth to clean the face of the iPad because 
from everyone touching it. It does get pretty dirty. And they give you, before they gave you these little, uh, they're almost like keychain screwdrivers. And I think it's nice that they upgraded and they give you a nice this little short stubby Phillips head screwdriver. This is what you're gonna use to take the faceplate on and off of the, the head. So what I wanna to touch on next is the fact that you can use just about any iPad in this. Now you, you do want an iPad Pro because they have a, the better front facing camera and a better processors and that type of stuff. Um, I have heard that the new M1 iPads are, are nice. They do have a 12 megapixel camera, but rumor has it that 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 camera only takes 12 megapixel photos in the ultra wide, which is not necessarily good for photo booths because, um, I mean, the ultra wide, what it does is it stretches everything out, right? So you get a wider view. So in the standard view, you're going to be using six megapixels, which is the same as uh, the older generation iPads. So what I'm doing now is I'm taking the screws out of the faceplate of the head because I haven't installed my iPad yet. And one thing to note is that if you do have one of the older generation iPads on top of your photo booth purchase, you are going to have to buy uh, a different face plate for the salsa that fits the, uh, the, the older generation iPads that have the, the home button. So my original salsa has that generation iPad and then so does this one. And I already have a new face plate there we go. So <clears throat> get this off here. And this is going to be the inside of the salsa. It gives you directions on how to attach the iPad and all that stuff. And one thing that you're going to have to change out. So right here this is a separate package that I had to order. It's going to be the faceplate for the second gen iPad Pro. Now the difference is going to be it's got the hole here for the camera, and then it has a small hole down here so you can operate that home button. It also comes with a different cable because the second generation iPads have the lightning connection instead of the USB-C connection. So I'll toss this back here. This is gonna be our old cable with our old faceplate. Here we have our second generation iPad with the home button. So it takes that home button to, to operate it. So what we're gonna do, get it popped here into our faceplate. We're gonna get it lined up. And that's it guys. Our iPad is officially installed in the head of our photo booth. So what I want to do next, guys, is I'm going to jump into a time lapse. I'm going to set the photo booth up and uh, then kind of walk you guys through my experience with the salsa. We're not going to do a tutorial on how to use it today because I've done some other videos on that and I might do some newer videos later, but it's pretty self-explanatory. The app is super simple. So let me jump into a time lapse and get this thing put together. So previously how I would do this is I used to feed the cable up through the base plate but I've learned there's an easier way to do it. So first things first, there's two sections to this. So you'll notice that where the uprights mount, it's not centered. So the longer section is gonna go back. You want that going to the back. That way when it's set up, if somebody pushes against the photo booth, they're not gonna tip it over as easily, right? So here, there's a little sticker in the back. I used to like, I like to use that as the direction is, you know, to the back. So put your first upright on there, tighten them down. Now you don't have to go super tight with these since mine's new. These are going in a little snug because of the powder coat that kind of, I think got into the bolts a little bit. But one thing to note is hopefully you can see this. These are kind of shaped like a T. You want to make sure when you're putting this together, I'll just come up and show you. So you want these, focus right here, there we go. You want these to be angled like that, you see that? If they're like this, you won't be able to put it together. The next tube will not mount onto the bottom tube and then the head will not mount onto this tube. So you gotta make sure that these are like that so that they can 
fit into those grooves because that's what kind of keeps everything secured and together. So now that we have that in there, we're gonna move on to feeding our power cable down through the bottom. Now how I like to do this is, let's grab the end here, drop it down through. Once it hits the bottom, you just reach up in here, grab it, and pull out your slack. Since this is a new cable, it's kind of tangled. Now I'm gonna move this down onto the floor and show you how the head goes on. So the head has an insert here. All you do is take the end of this power cable, pop it in here, thread it in, It's got a little nut that locks it on. Feed your cable down into the, the uprights. Tighten up your thumb screws. And then on the back, there's an adjustment lever here that you can loosen and tighten. What this does is it allows you to pitch the head up or down. So basically, depending on how far away you are from your backdrop, you can tip this back and forth and adjust it. Once you get it where in the place that you want it, pull out on it, pivot it. I like to point mine down that way. I don't know, it just looks clean that way. But that's that guys. And that's uh, the first assembly of my second salsa booth. So now that I showed you guys how to assemble the salsa, I really wanna dive in a little deeper on why I purchased the second salsa, how it's really helped me grow my business, and how it's been a super, super profitable add-on for my DJ services. So backstory again, just real quick. I met Brandon Wong in 2019 at the DJ Collective, saw the salsa, I really liked it, I really liked the build quality, and I thought it was a good product. I ended up purchasing one there at the collective, and then uh, when, once I got it, which was, you know, I was tail into 2019 there, uh, before wedding season even kicked off, pandemic hit, so I didn't get to use it a ton. So fast forward to 2020, or 2021, uh, I used the salsa a ton. It actually went out 24 times this year, my, my original salsa, uh, ranging from either $500 if I was the DJ, or $600 if I was not the DJ and it was a photo booth only event. So of those 24 events, eight of those were photo booth only, meaning I made $600. Now, some of those I did send out an attendant, which I paid that attendant to go set the photo booth up, tear it down, set up the backdrop, all that stuff. So I do have an expense there. But all said and done, gross dollars. I made roughly $15,000 off my salsa booth this year, gross take my deductions out of that. You know, I'd, I'd have to do the math to figure out what the net actually is, but $15,000 gross. Um, it's $50 a month for the app. So now that I have a second one, I will have to have two licenses for the app. So it'll be costing me $100 a month. If the salsa goes out at least once, that more than pays for you know the app. Even if only one salsa goes out, that more than pays for the app. Um, next wedding season, I have salsa number one, I have it booked out 14 times, and then I already have four events that are double booked, meaning I have this salsa, salsa number two, and salsa number one both booked. So my goal for next year, um, I would like to do at least 50 photo booth events. I think we can hit that goal, and you do the math on that at anywhere from five to 600 bucks a pop, 50 events. That's pretty profitable. If you're on the edge or hesitant about adding a salsa or just a photo booth, you know, to your DJ business in general, or if you're, you know, a photographer or just somebody looking to get into the photo booth business, there's definitely money to be made there. And at this price point, I'm definitely um, under what a lot of people are charging. There's people in other markets that are charging like 800 to 1,000 to rent this. Um, because my market has some lower end uh, photo booth companies that charge you know, some of them are charging seven or eight hundred dollars for a photo booth that does prints and, and with an attendant and all that type of stuff. So it's hard for me to come in 
and charge the same for the salsa unless you market it properly. So that's a whole nother, that's a whole nother video though on how to market the salsa and you know why the social booth is better than one that does, does prints and that type of stuff. I would also like to do a video on lighting the salsa and how to make your pictures come out better because one of the biggest complaints is that the iPad doesn't take that great of pictures. Now that is true. Now it is only a six megapixel camera, but in the right conditions, it takes great photos. What that means is good lighting. You can't have the salsa up 10 feet away from the backdrop, six feet at most away from the backdrop. If you need to add extra lighting in a dark room, you can. And I'm gonna do a standalone video on added lighting and some of the things that I do to make my salsa or to make my salsa photos come out better. Um, I think the first thing you should do when you buy a salsa though is rename it. So ours is called the Lux Booth, obviously, because I own Lux Entertainment, we call it the Lux Booth. So they're gonna be Lux Booth one, Lux Booth two. And uh, I've got all my guys trained on how to set it up, how to uh, basically position it from the backdrop and all that type of stuff. So I'll do some standalone videos on lighting and um, maybe even a standalone video on how I market the salsa to my clients. But for now guys, I would just like to reiterate the fact that salsa is awesome. It's been hands down the best add on to my DJ business. All right guys, that's all I have for you today. There's a link down below to um, it's my private, my personal salsa uh, affiliate link. Yes, I am an affiliate for salsa and you can be an affiliate for salsa as well once you purchase your booth. Um, I do get a small commission for every booth that's sold. So do me a huge favor uh, for me putting in all this effort, making these, these cool salsa videos. Uh, if you do buy one, buy one through my link below. I'll catch up with you guys in the next one. Peace. Oh, as always, if you're new around here, please like, comment, and subscribe. See ya.